Rise, ashen, tarnished, chosen, undead, and welcome to your next installment of the Dark Souls Platinum Trophy Guide. Lost my train of thought for a second there, sorry. Um, okay, so in the last video, we finished off with the Silver Knight Farm. So at this stage, you should have yourself... Yeah, let's do it this way, it's easy. Hey, Silver Knight Straight Sword. Do not do the plus one. If you didn't see it in the previous video, I goofed. I was uh, doing a repair and I menued too quickly and I ended up using a Twinkling Tide tonight that I didn't need to use. So do not do plus one. You don't need that. Just a point of note. Uh, anyway, Silver Knight Straight Sword. You should also have got a Silver Knight Spear and a Silver Knight Shield. Any excess are surplus. You can discard them. Um, but you need one of each for the knights on our trophy. The other thing that we did was we continued to farm the silver knights until we got ourselves to the last four levels that we got. So that was getting our strength to 24, attunement to 12, and endurance to 20. Um, I've attuned into the second slot. I've attuned homeward. We can't use that miracle yet, but that is going to be rectified in this video. Uh, so that's just ready to go. Don't worry if Soleil's not there, that just means that you've done a walking path where you've got a bit too far, he's moved on, but his summoning sign is going to be where we need it to be. So the key thing is, for this video, we're about to fight Ornstein and Smoke, so we need to make sure that we are in human form, and I like to kindle this bonfire as well so that we have 10 Estus available to us. Just in case things go wrong. So you'll need to reverse hollowing and to be able to kindle, then kindle, and then just make sure that I just like to keep my humanity at 10 or above. So 10 humanity does actually give you a slight defense buff as well, so it's not a complete lack of med method to the madness. Uh, right, and we're now going to uh, head to our boss fight. Ornstein Smoke is one of the harder bosses in the game, quite significantly so, um, uh, especially since this time round, we are going to make sure that we fight Giant Ornstein. So we're going to make sure that we defeat Smoke first, um, which means you'll fight Giant Ornstein. Um, you'll notice that I'm just looking at the banister here, there is actually a shortcut, so rather than having to go all the top all the way down, uh, we're just going to run here, jump. Wow, too much shortcut. So that is twice that in this playthrough. First, the uh, Asylum Demon uh, not getting the plunge attack, and now a very weird jump. Although the second part was definitely a player error on my part. The first part was probably as well. I'm digressing. In here is a Titanite Demon. We are going to fight him, but not now. We're going to do that later on. And we are, we're still going to come up and around here, so before we, we're not going to do a mad dash to the boss room because we are going to summon Soler. Soler is going to help take some of the heat of us when it's a two-on-one fight. Um, so we're going to come around here, we're going to defeat the three enemies in this area before we summon Soler, um, so that Soler has the most health available for the boss fight. So come here. Just be careful, the shockwave of the arrow can hit you. Oh, of course you drop. And I'm not even wearing the cup to scope. Doesn't matter, we've got the item. So what I like to do is come here, jump, roll, or don't roll and keep running. The reason that we're doing this is so that we only have to fight one at a time. Oh, once you get past halfway, the one at the back will start to uh, backtrack. So these guys do more damage. They also have more health. They also have two extra moves in their move set. They have the Emit Force Miracle, which is just an AoE shockwave. Um, they also have a heal. This is Emit Force. So that will knock you back and deal a decent amount of damage, but they also have a heal, which is obviously annoying. There it is. So if they start to heal, just get in some hits to counteract that. 
just like previously, they love backing into walls. It's almost as if they know that they've got a giant shield in front of them and you're trying to get around it. Come on, shield bash. Thank you. Poke, poke, poke. There we go. So, just take your time, play it safe. Um, these do have another chance to, gro to drop the uh, giant shield. Um, we bought the halberd earlier. For you, this is a chance that you could get the shield, so feel free to use your covetous gold ring. But it's not a guaranteed drop, and we're not going to farm for it, so... I... Unless you want to farm for it, if you don't get it from these enemies, then don't worry, we will buy the shield from the giant blacksmith later on. So don't worry, you will have all of the items needed for the Knight's Power Trophy. Uh oh. So what? There you go. So that's either going to be a halberd or a shield. So if they drop for you, pick it up. That is money you don't have to spend. Although if you've bought the halberd at the same time as me, unfortunate, unlucky. Um, what I like to do is while I'm summoning, get my heal off there, so I'm not wasting too much time. And what we're going to do, because uh, Ornstein has a lightning affinity. The Lightning Spear won't do as much damage. We're going to swap for the Crystal Halberd. When you do so, it is doubling the weight of your weapon, so just check what your rolling situation is. Make sure you don't have a heavy fat roll. Solaire, rather than take the stairs, he will drop down and lose some health because pff, he's Solaire. He's crazy. Okay, so the name of the game is Beat Up the Big Hammer-Wielding Smoke First. Uh, once one of these two is defeated, the other one will then go giant, and that's the one whose soul you will get. You need both souls to make the boss weapons, so you are going to have to... We do this twice anyway, and we're going to do it the other way the next time. Uh, the reason is, Ornstein on his own, as you can see, is quicker. So what I'm doing, two-handing when I hit, keep my shield up, wait till a safe move chance, and then two-hand hit, hit, not taking anything for granted, because we don't want to get big damage if you do get hit with your shield down. There we go. So Ornstein will gain all of his health back. It is important that you kill Smoke first. Worst case, you kill Ornstein first, or Solaire kills Ornstein first. It just means you're going to have to do it the other way around. Uh, on your second playthrough on New Game Plus, where they do more damage and have more health. Right. So. Key thing here. Stay up close, stay between the legs. You will miss some attacks, but he will miss a heck of a lot more than you do. Solaire is probably going to die. Um, he's not helping you in this fight. Uh, because he has lightning affinity and Ornstein takes no lightning damage. So if you did keep the lightning spear on, only the physical side of its attack will actually do anything. No, I ran out of stamina, no, that's why. So, if he jumps up, he's going to do the shockwave move. Just step back. But ultimately, you miss pretty much everything he's got just by staying between his legs. Just step back when he jumps up. Don't get too cocky. Roll towards him if he jumps back and attacks. And two hand. 
miss my poke, but it's okay. There we go. So, be patient. We actually kept Solera alive, so we're going to get a Sunlight Medal from him. Don't worry if that doesn't happen for you. Um, we are going to get enough Sunlight Medals. Worst case, you'll have to farm for one in the Maggot area. Get your souls. The drop here is not guaranteed, so this is the Leo ring. We do not need it. You are welcome to pick it up, um, but it is not guaranteed, so I'm not going to pick it up. Come up here. I'm going to re-equip, so the Crystal Halberd cannot be repaired. If it breaks, I'm going to re-equip my Lightning Spear before I forget. Light the bonfire. Have a rest of the bonfire. As always, I like to over repair. You do not have to repair as much as me. And open the door for Guinevere. Dark Souls gods definitely like the name Gwyn. Gwyn. Guinevere, Gwendolyn, Gwen. Come here, the child. Hello. Oh, chosen undead, I am Guinevere. Kneel and obtain the Lord Vessel for our ninth trophy. The Lord Vessel trophy. Wait, kneel again. And now we're going to join the Covenants as well. For our tenth trophy, Covenant Princess's Guard. Thanks, Mama. We shall return later. But for now, we are going to come to the bonfire and level up Faith to 18. Even so, this is where having that Homeward Miracle already purchased at this point just becomes beautiful. Now we have Faith F at 18, we can use the Homeward Miracle, which does the same thing as a Homeward Bone. It will take us to our last bonfire. Why that's so good at this point to have it is now we have the warp function because of the Lord Vessel. So now we can warp between select bonfires that we've been to. Like the Firelink, where we're going to go to now. Now, this next section, super important, this next part. If you have followed everything that I've done, Siegmeier is going to be at Firelink. You get one chance to do this, so make sure you say yes to Siegmeier. Siegmeier is going to think about it and think, are we the ones that opened the gate? And we have to say yes. Then he will give us the Emit Force Miracle. Gates of the Old Fortress, was that your doing? Don't rush this. Yes. If you say no, you will not get the miracle and you're going to have to go out of your way in your subsequent playthroughs to get it again. So in the interest of time, let's do it the first time. Fourth miracle, omit force. I like to rest here because that's going to automatically be a kindled bonfire. So get to 10 esters. We're now going to completely ignore Frampt, the giant serpent. Completely ignore him. And all we're going to do is we're going to roll past and fall down the void ourselves. We will never talk to Frampt throughout all of the playthroughs. Frampt is... The serpent that lies to you in the lore, um, Frampt works alongside the gods to keep the Age of Fire going. Um, so Frampt wants you to take Gwyn's place uh, to keep the the, pri the first fire going to prevent the Age of Dark from taking over. Um, there's a bit of lore for you. So, now you've placed the Lord Vessel, which uh, that cutscene that we've just skipped, that is opening the areas for us to fight the Great Lords, or uh, sometimes referred to as the Gods, for their Great Souls. So, 
we are now going to warp. We've got a few bits that we're going to be doing first, so we're going to go to Undead Parish. the titanite demon in here so watch out lightning should be the first thing that he does keep moving and that's fine and then what you want to do is get in to the as always the right your right it's left only get a couple of attacks in because he is going to jump back and eventually he's going to do his jumping attack to reposition like so Make sure you walk away from him with your shield up. If you're too close, the damage will go through your shield and you're still going to get painted. And you definitely don't want that. Keeping the Titanite Demons is the more you kill, the stronger the others get. So they're all kind of linked in some weird... in some weird legion type way. Get the Demon Titanite. And I always like when I go through this section just to equip the cover to skull ring, just so that we can up our chances of getting moss dropped for us. Plus, we're going to need it anyway because we're about to do our next farm. We're going to do the stone golem farm. We need to get a stone sword and shield. Blood red, that is not the moss that we want. Purple is good, blooming purple is better. There we go, blooming purple. And purple, there we go. So purple heals poison, blooming purple heals blooming purple heals toxic. Soul packet here if you want it. I'm just going to double check at this point. I have conveniently been unlucky and only had enough titanite chunks to get the spear to plus three. I'm just going to double check because at this point you are most likely to be able to get it up to plus four, which is more preferable, but no. So you're not guaranteed to have enough chunks for it. If you can, just make sure you have a plus four lightning spear. Uh, it can help take one less attack. Uh, kindle this bomb up. That's going to be for the boss later on. And then make sure you have Covetous Gold Ring equipped and make sure that you have 10 or more humanity. So if you don't have at least 10, do what I'm doing, pop humanity until you have 10. If you have 10 or more already, then no need to pop anything more on that one. Uh, yes, the more humanity you have on you, the more passive defense you get. However, you have to do it in quite sizable chunks to really get the benefit. Um, that said, just for you to be aware, if you do have 99 humanity and you're wearing the Havel's armor set, then uh, you are pretty hench as far as defense goes um, but we're not going to be doing that that's a lot of humanity that we're not going to spend time farming for so here follow the route that I do we're going to farm these stone golems four hits two-handed and we get one already stone great sword okay now we just need a stone shield fantastic Ah, I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, he's having a right old. Okay. From number two, come here. Early stab on this. This second one likely will spawn 
because you are just outside the range to be able to hit it. There is a... Right on the edge, you can hit it before it spawns. But don't move too far forward, because as you can see, there is another soldier there. Moss clamp. So, similar to the slugs in uh, Blight Town, these enemies are rather large and they can hide uh, items, so just make sure you double check the body. What we're going to do now is we're going to come back this way. And we're going to fight this sentinel. The reason we're coming around this way is so that we don't get ambushed by multiple trees when we fight the last of them. Drop the shield. Nope. So, here's one. No, we didn't want to kick there. Now we're going to come around here and kill this tree. So, if you aggro the stone giant, it will automatically spawn the trees. So, the path I've taken is so that you only have to deal with one stone giant and also as few trees as possible at the same time. Ah, three swords! Three swords, no shields. Well, that's kind of normal. This takes anywhere, in my experience, this will... So I'm switching to Homeward, and I'm using Homeward to go to the last bonfire rested at, which will be the hidden bonfire. But yeah, my experience, this will be anything from three to around 15 farm runs to get to. Um, so don't worry if you get the items in more runs than it takes me, or if it, you do it in less, don't worry. Um, from here on in, uh, we are all good in terms of, as long as you follow what I'm doing, you will guaranteed have the souls needed. If it takes less farms than what I do, do not worry, you will also have the souls needed. So as soon as you can lock onto them, you can start swinging and hitting them. It's technically a fraction of a second before you can lock on. Um, but all enemies that have a spawning animation have invincibility frames or iframes while they are doing their spawn, which is what I was talking about for this tree. You have to hit it with the tip of your spear, otherwise uh, it will spawn because you've gotten too close. And while it's spawning, you are not going to be able to hit it for about a second for the trees. They kind of jump up, they do this shudder type motion and then they're available to hit. Last time I did this farm I had terrible terrible luck with the farm. Uh, yeah, it took me about, I want to say, 15 farms to get uh, the sword, ironically, to drop. Uh, I had a lot of shields. But prior to that, I, had, uh, I have had that where in a single run I managed to get both, so do not worry about that. I thought that was a tree. I thought it was this tree. You don't need the elite armor set. It's just going to clog up your inventory space. So that was a mistake on my part. Right. Try this again. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I took the shield out. So this tree, in theory, should not spawn based on the path that we're taking. However, one time, it randomly did. So I, I always like to kill that one, because that's the one that can sneak up on you. No item. You drop. This will be good. That 
would have been good. But no, it's fine. Stamp. Just outside. Oh, there we go. So don't, even if he drops the item, it's probably safer to finish the route before checking. Um, so that you don't have trees plus soldier at the same time. Our character conveniently crotch height for these stone soldiers. That's disconcerting. More. So yeah, I always like to pick up the drops from the trees so that we have more ways of healing toxic in our future runs. You. No. No. Okay. And we're just waiting for a shield. So the grass crest shield on your back is just as effective in terms of your stamina regeneration as in if it was in your hand. So if you're going to be two-handing a weapon, it is the perfect shield to have on you. Do drop me a shield, please. I said please. It's okay, because you're going to drop it for me, aren't you? Nope. Okie dokie. Step. 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 Uh oh. Oh. Why are you suddenly deciding to miss? You could drop me a shield to compensate, but no. So don't be afraid to use your Estus here. You're going back to a Kindle bonfire, so you will get all ten of your Estus back. That move, if it lands, is just going to... Yes! We got the shield! Whoop whoop! Thank you! Okay, cool. So yeah, that move, if it hits, it's going to slow down your movement and stamina regeneration until you defeat the enemy that spawned it. Uh, I believe it does go over time, it does go away. Right. Now that we have got the sword and shield from that farm, we're going to come here, we are going to summon Witch Beatrice, it doesn't matter that I didn't kill all of the stone golems in this area. The only reason we were fighting them was so that we could get the sword and shield. Once you summoned her, come up these stairs. And we, and I mean very much we, because Witch Beatrice is going to do most of the work, are going to fight the Moonlight Butterfly boss. Key thing with this boss, keep a shield up. It is all magic damage. So we're going to, as always, keep our shield up. We're going to try and dodge what we can. Lock on so Witch Beatrice realises, yes, you're supposed to fight. Come on, Beatrice. Don't go too far away, otherwise Beatrice will think that we're walking and not fighting, as you can see here. Beatrice, you are supposed to be doing damage. There you go. As you can see, which Beatrice is magic, no joke, big damage. So all we're going to do is we are going to continue to avoid the Moonlight Butterfly and dodge its attacks as best we can. And yes, we'll... Well... Fair play with Beatrice. Normally, when it starts to close in like that, it is going to perch on the edge, and that's when you can attack it. That's the first time that Beatrice has just outright done the whole boss. Normally, it takes a couple of pokes from you, so you kind of feel like you had some merit in that fight. But, 
as you can see, Moonlight Butterfly, not a problem. Uh, dodge the spells and you're all good. New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus. Uh, actually, no, we only have to do a New Game Plus because we only need two of them. Uh, in New Game Plus, it does do a lot more damage, so you just got to be mindful of that. But again, strategy doesn't change. Come up here, watch our basement key and the Divine Ember. Homeward. I'm going to do a paranoia check to make sure I definitely got. Well, definitely got great sword because there's plenty of those. I'm actually going to drop the spares that I've got because I only need one. And. Stone Great Shield. Fantastic. I'm going to drop my extra Silver Knight Shield so I don't have quite as much to flick through in my inventory. From here. You can either walk back or just teleport yourself back to under Parish to go back to Andre. I like to walk back. We've still got the Covetous Ring equipped. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more souls from these plants. Why not? So this is the spawn animation. Once it's finished shuddering is when you can attack it. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we are going to give the Divine Ember to Andre the Blacksmith. Um, so make sure you say yes when he asks you about it. And we're then going to modify our Manserp and Great Sword into a Divine Manserp Great Sword, as it is called. That's a rare ember. Can I have it? Yes. Yes, you can. So, modify. So, you can only modify a plus 5 or plus 10, depending on the type of modification. We're going to modify the Man Serpent Greatsword into Div Man Serpent Greatsword. That is why we had to get that one Green Tide Knight Shard guaranteed. If you got more off of the um, first slug run that we did, then you can use that, and I recommend modifying towards a plus five Div Man Serpent Greatsword. So. Don't worry if you if you have none or you don't have enough to get it to plus five. We are going to farm for that. As I said, only guaranteed in this run. Uh, might as well repair because that's what I do apparently. Um, come up here, rest at the bonfire, and we're going to level up. We're going to level our intelligence to nine. Uh, so as you can see I've got more souls than that however depending on your stone golem farming you may not have enough to go higher than nine so nine is guaranteed. Uh, if you do have more um, the next thing we're going to spend souls on is going to be uh, getting our int towards 18 so you, you can Put yours to 10 if you wish. Uh, from there, we're going to walk, warp rather, to Firelink. to rest at fire and we're now going to take the lift shortcut again hey derp don't talk to derp he is a bad man pretty much all the clerics in this are bad 
So, take the lift drop. If you remember from before, from here, roll. And you'll always get there. Don't run. Don't jump. Just roll. And this time we're going to come all the way up the stairs. And we're going to come to this nest and we're going to curl up like a ball. And you have to wait. Uh, you have to wait a minute. So, yeah, this is definitely a test of patience for when you first do it because it feels like nothing's happening. Um, and normally things happen quite quickly. Um, that's clearly by design. But no, we're just going to wait. And when you think nothing's happening, you're going to continue to wait. And there you go, you're going to get transported back to the Undead Asylum. This time there's some enemies outside and they have torches. Do not get hit with your shield down. Uh, if you recall the flailing attack that they have with the fire damage, that can actually kill you, especially if it is two of them that are attacking you. So either let them attack and outpace them like that, or keep your shield up, because otherwise, as you can see, one hit does a lot of damage. You imagine what six of those do, and then the second guy starts attacking you at the same time. Yeah, not a good time. Um, we're intentionally not going to rest at a bonfire here, so you cannot warp from the bonfire here. Um, so in the interest of time, what we're going to do is not rest, and when we then use Homeward, we're going to go back to Firelink. So, you'll notice I've walked around the outside. Do not walk into the middle. Do not walk into the middle. You will drop down. It will collapse underneath you. Um, not only will you take damage, um, but you've then got a boss that we are going to fight. However, we want to make sure that we fight some of these. Black Knight here. Uh, you are welcome to use the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring uh, if you want to farm for the Black Knight Sword. Um, it is a great weapon and I can highly recommend it. It's going to be better than the sword we use, um, but not guaranteed. You only have about a 16% chance of dropping it. Um, so I'm not going to be using it until it... Well, we're not going to be using it because by the time we're guaranteed the sword, we are also guaranteed the halberd, and that's what we're going to use for our new game plus run. Come up here. Now, our good buddy, our knight that helped us escape in the first place, as you recall, he died. He is now gone hollowed, and he blames you for it. Boulder's still here, so come up. Let the boulder go down. <laughs> You can backstab, you can parry, just be careful because he can also parry. So, fair play, this actually feels like an actual player character in a way, uh, the way that he moves. But yeah. Guaranteed drop, he will drop the crest shield, uh, which is one of the items required for your knights on a trophy. So we're nicely on track for that. Now, before the boss, there is one more key thing that we need to do, and by key, we have to use a key. So the key, if you recall, when we did this lift drop the first time, we rolled onto that roof and we picked up a key. That key unlocks a gate, if you remember from way back in the beginning. There was a door that we didn't open just past here that one and there is an item at the end of there and it's a very important item uh, hollow swordsman and as you probably saw a spearman there we go so we use that key once you get to the end here don't run because otherwise you're going to have to walk all the way around again and rusted iron ring so the rusted iron wing the rusted iron ring um enables you to move normally in otherwise bogged down areas like the blight town swamp where normally you trudge through all slow but actually now we're going to be able to move through at a normal pace fantastic uh let's see how we're doing time we are good so let's defeat the stray demon now 
So, walk into the middle, you're going to fall down, quickly chug an Estus Flask, get your shield up, and we're going to get to the side, or preferably behind, the Stray Demon. Um, so, if you find out where he is, quick drink, shield up, and get ready to dodge. There we go, right. Now you are to the side or behind, there are only two attacks that he's going to do. This one, so long as you are not underneath him and you have your shield up, you will not have to worry about damage from that. And the second one is this one, at which point, keep your distance, then move in. After each, you are going to do a single attack. Even if you miss, like I did there, stick to a single. When he does this, move to the side of your shield up. The reason is, his staff has a weird hitbox. Um, shockwave attack. So as long as you stick to this method, you do not have to worry about this boss at all. If you get greedy and try to go for too many hits, I know, yes, it takes a little while, it's the walk and poke, um, but he does a lot of damage. Uh, we are not a particularly strong build in terms of defense. Uh, we're not particularly weak, but we're not particularly strong either. So, shield up that fawn there. That's the weird hitbox. Oh. Can walk back. Nice and simple bosses the demons are. The issues that come with the demons is normally the terrain that they're in. Um, so this one um, is relatively enclosed and he can end up backing himself where it's difficult to stay beside or behind and if you are not beside or behind all of his forward facing attacks are a royal pain in the back side they all half of them do this shockwave move which is an incredibly long range uh, and does so much damage um, it really is easy for him to well he can definitely two hit you uh, if he does his fly move and you get caught underneath him, especially with your shield down, uh, that will one-shot you. So, there's a reason why we are doing a very slow and steady and safe approach to this boss. And as you can see by the distance and the fact that I'm not even sprinting up to him, uh, I'm very much respecting his damage. sprint now but if you get there too early you get hit by the shockwave that can throw everything off uh, because that can knock you in front of him he then does a different move uh, it can all get messy quickly. so as long as you're further back than the tail uh oh speaking of things getting messy quick we got away with that so there I got nudged by that spike if I didn't have my shield up oh no 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 okay he did not do a shockwave move. That worked in my favour. There's a shockwave move. Yep. Okay, thank you. We're back on track. Tail is also hittable. Oh, that's close to the butt. Come on, come over here. There we go, that's got you a little bit further away from that wall. Oh, that's it, that's it. Get your backside away from the wall, that's where I want to hit you. Hit you in the squish. So yeah, if I mean if you had, uh, if you got an early Black Knight sword drop, then you would have actually easily defeated this enemy in about six hits. Um, but that's not guaranteed. So we're using a less effective weapon that you're guaranteed to have at this stage of the game, and we are compensating by making the game as safe and easy as possible for you.
I used to do this with Drake Sword. Um, literally as soon as you get the lift. Because um, you do get some good souls, but it's just not worth it. Um, this is a good time to do it because you can at least take a couple of hits if you put your shield up. We are going to do this three times, this boss, but it's going to get easier each time. Um, and the reason why is Titanite Slab. This is the only way you can get a guaranteed Titanite Slab. Uh, you can farm for it if you wish, but for the souls, for the positioning and everything else, it's just worth doing it this way. It's guaranteed. And it's a farm we don't have to do. Come up the ladder, don't use the home with bone, it's a trap. Come down here, and we've got another Black Knight Swordsman. Come on. Run, 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 stab. Nope. By this point, hopefully, you should be very comfortable, or at least familiar, more often than not able to parry these type of attacks that not oh, Black Knight Sword. So yeah. If you get it, then I highly recommend using it. Um, it's better than the weapon that we're going to be using until we get towards the end of our first run. Pick up the Peculiar Doll, and then homeward we're done here. So if you do have a Black Knight Sword, you are already ready to use it. Um, pop your soul of a hero, that gives you the 10,000 souls that you need. You have the 10 Twinkling Titanites that you need. You can then upgrade it to plus five, which is maximum. And then you can actually use that for the entirety of the game. Uh, it will be slightly worse than the halberd we're going to use towards the end. But until we use the halberd, it is going to be better than everything else we use. So I can't stress enough, if you have a Black Knight Sword, upgrade it to plus five. Uh, specifically use the soul of a hero for the souls. Upgrade it to plus five and then use that weapon and you are set for the game. Uh, right, so we have beaten the Stray Demon, Black Knight, we've got the Peculiar Doll, Homeward, and from here we're going to walk back to Undead Parish. and we're going to purchase the Crest of Artorius for 20,000 souls. Important item for us to have. And just check. If you can, if your Lightning Spear is at plus four, you can now upgrade it to plus five and you will get your Lightning Weapon Trophy, the 11th trophy of your playthrough. Uh, I'm still missing a Titanite Chunk, so as soon as I get a Titanite Chunk, that is what I'm going to do. Um, but, not a problem. All we're going to do now is head back to the hidden bonfire, ready to use the Crest of a Hartorius. And then we're going to have to fight, sadly so, we are going to have to fight Sif. Sif, a wonderful dog who is purely actually trying, despite the fact that you're going, well, he's trying to kill us, he's actually trying to save you. Um, Sif guards the Ring of the Abyss, uh, or the Ring of Victorious, which allows you to traverse the Abyss. Uh, Sif, having seen what going to the Abyss did to Artorius, is actually trying to stop you um, because it's trying to prevent that fate happening to anybody else. So yeah, Sif, wonderful doggo, uh, which we sadly are going to have to bop three times um, because we need to use his soul three times for three different boss weapons. So, the rest. And with that, I'm going to end this video. Um, so at this point, you have either got 10 or 11 trophies. The 11th would be your lightning weapon trophy. Um, 
even if you do have your Lightning Spirit plus four, if you want to hold off and upgrade it to plus five when I do mine, you're welcome to do so. Um, actually, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to level up my intelligence to level 10. There we are. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to join the Forest Hunter Covenant. Uh, we're going to defeat Sif. We're then going to defeat the Hydra. Uh, we're going to get our next five spells, including a rather important one. Um, we're then going to do our Green Titanite Farm to get our Divine Man Serpent Great Sword to plus five. So that's all to come in the next video. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough. I hope you're able to follow this along and you're enjoying your Platinum Dark Souls journey as much as I've enjoyed mine many, many times over. So all that's left for me to say now is bye for now and I'll see you in the next chapter.